coming up next on Legislative Review. We forge profound forces for good when we unite, not divide, around our best ideas. The governor's State of the State speech rolls out a plan to eliminate half of homelessness by 2022. He needs to look somewhere besides the state savings account. While the Republican response to the governor pans his speech, providing other solutions. Thank you for watching this episode of Legislative Review for Tuesday, January 14th, as we cover the 2020 legislative session. I'm your host, Troy Kirby. Today, we focus on everything from the governor's capital budget requests, the Republican response, and the state's focus on greenhouse gas emission standards. We'll call to order the capital budget meeting for January 14th. We get started with the House Capital Budget Committee, which held a work session and public hearing to discuss the supplemental budget on January 14th. Committee Chair, Democrat Representative Steve Thuringer, reminded the entire committee that it was not the time to ask for more money for constituent projects. That's really the takeaway message for folks. To, that uh, shows the, the lack of funds here in the supplemental, very much a very true supplemental process where we might move dollars around within existing allocations to meet demand, but there is very little uh, new money. So. Just take note as you're talking to your constituents, who I know have many desires with, uh, for capital dollars, but the, this is, the supplemental is not the time to, to fund those projects. So. Um, thank you for having Senior me. analyst for the Governor's to Office of Financial Management, Jen Masterson, presented the funds available to spend on the Governor's proposed plan to increase the capacity for shelters and new programming aimed at eliminating half of the homeless population by 2022. The governor proposes a $30 million grant program for the construction of new enhanced shelters <laughs> and the enhancement of basic drop-in shelters through facility improvements such as laundries, bathrooms, and storage spaces. Experience has shown that shelters providing day access, secure storage, and hygiene facilities tend to have higher utilization. And when those sites are linked with other service programs, which the governor has proposed in the operating budget, we see better results. We estimate this $30 million will enhance 117 shelters, expand 39 shelters, and construct six new shelters for a total of 1,300 new shelter beds and enhancements for 3,500 existing beds. Uh, as Director Schumacher presented to the House Appropriations Committee yesterday, this funding is out of the Housing Trust account following a transfer from the Budget Stabilization account. Masterson then focused on a $15 million ask by Governor Inslee for state institution improvements. This is what the OFM Capital team calls the broccoli of the budget. Um, by that, I mean projects like leaking pipes at Monroe Correctional Complex, which are causing water infiltration into the walls. Um, or projects like the main dock at McNeil Island, which is cracked and damaged beyond repair. Although these projects are not very glamorous, they keep state institutions running safely. The governor's office of financial management then asked for an investment in K through 12 public schools based off of a school seismic safety assessment authorized by the legislature in 2019. The governor proposes a new grant program to local school districts for seismic retrofit and safety related improvements to schools. Funding is also provided for state grants to local school districts to conduct rapid visual screening assessments of schools. These assessments identify inventory and score buildings according to their risk of collapse from a major earthquake and will help identify and prioritize future seismic projects. Would the House and Senate and all of our guests please join me in welcoming his Excellency, Governor Jay Inslee. On January 14th, Governor Jay Inslee provided his State of the State speech to the House and Senate, laying out his 2020 legislative agenda with lawmaking vision towards the next decade in Washington State. One of our deepest Washington values is summoning the courage to explore and embrace big ideas, ideas that actually change our lives. And the people who power our state's successes have shared a common element, a stalwart 
an unbending commitment to be better, to get the job done. And never resign to those timid souls who think that the status quo is good enough. Our embrace of new ideas speaks to who we are as a people. And as we start a new decade, we can reflect on how we've reached that. We are willing to imagine where we could go if we accepted challenges that at first felt impossible. We can do this because we recognize we belong to one community. We forge profound forces for good when we unite, not divide, around our best ideas. Inslee focused on the inclusive issue of homelessness, which he said didn't discriminate against age, ethnicity, or gender. We know that homelessness reaches all ages, all races, all backgrounds, and we know there is no one cause. This doesn't impact just people experiencing mental health challenges or chemical dependency problems. Thousands of people uh, know that Washington is the best place to live and work in the country. So they've come here. That's a good thing. And while we're pleased with our economic growth, we also have people who have faced economic problems that put affording a place of their own out of reach, in part because we have not built enough housing for the people who are coming to this state. It's not just people living in tents or under freeways, in wet cardboard boxes. We have families living in cars, veterans who need help staying in their apartment, single parents facing financial struggles, high school students sleeping on other people's couches when they can find one. And too many people are one financial crisis away from being homeless. Each year, we know in the past decade, we've done more to address homelessness and housing affordability. We've doubled our state's investment in homelessness response since the recession. And I want to thank you for your leadership in that regard. We've combated several causes of homelessness, like opioid addiction and mental illnesses. We've laid a strong foundation. But I've seen this growing crisis firsthand. I've seen it all over the state. I've seen how it affects Centralia, Bellingham, Spokane, Tacoma, and Bremerton. I believe we have an obligation to help solve this problem. Our compassion will not allow us to look the other way. Inslee talked about the need for clean fuel standard legislation in Washington state in 2020. We know this, Washington state is not a state of climate denial. It is a state of climate science acceptance. And for those who say, Those who say that we should not take action, I say that climate inaction is just as deadly as climate denial. This is the year for climate action. It's time to pass a Washington law for Washington jobs, for Washington drivers, and Washington children, and let's bring this success home this year. Inslee concluded his speech with a message of unity to the House and Senate lawmakers. The, the good news is we can do these things. We can because we are the state that embraces the biggest ideas and tries the newest things. Our ambitions can sound daunting, but we know the path to get there. Look what we've done in the state of Washington. We have made something that is indisputable. We have made something that is inspiring. We have created a spark that ignites our innovation, our collaboration, our communities, our partnerships, and the big ideas that we fit into this state. We experience the best of Washington when we come together. We've just heard the governor's view of how things are in our state. Senator John Braun provided the Republican response to Governor Inslee's State of the State speech. Braun advocated to protect the Rainy Day Fund from Governor Inslee's homelessness plan. This time, he wants to pull more than $300 million out of the state's Rainy Day Fund. 
As the Republican leader on Ways and Means Committee, I can tell you we need that money in the rainy day fund for when the state economy slows. That's what the voters intended. If the governor believes more tax dollars are the best response to the homeless situation, he needs to look somewhere besides the state savings account. Braun also highlighted Initiative 976 Public Vote Passage, which limited car tabs to $30, and if enacted, will also have a major impact on the transportation budget. Braun said that Republicans had a solution to respect the voice of the voters while avoiding massive cuts to schools. But when those in control ignored the very people who were hurting, the result was Initiative 976. Republicans have legislation to keep the $30 license tabs as the voters directed. And it would not take money away from schools in spite of what the governor claims. Thank you for watching Legislative Review as we cover the 2020 legislative session. I'm your host, Troy Kirby. Watch us on TVW Nightly at 8 p.m. and 11 p.m with a weekly legislative review on Friday nights. Be sure to follow us digitally, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube.